Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to give you a bit of an update on this, the Avatar HD system from Walksnail Stroke Cadex. Now since the release of this system I have been following it, I've made a lot of coverage about it and I have shared with you my opinions on the system up till this point, including stating that I think it is still a beta product. However, it's been a little while since I've made content on this, there is new beta firmware in the works and I I feel it's now time to share with you what my position is on this system today, but also discuss the fact that there are discounts available on it as well, and the fact that we're likely to see a new system from the big three letter company in the next couple of weeks, and where that leaves this. Now, just to be clear, this video is going to be a talking head video, there is going to be no flight footage, more than anything I want to address the issues and the problems and the questions that I've brought up about the system in the past and then at the end explain where my position is today. Now as always my thoughts are entirely my own, some people will agree with them, some people won't. If you'd like to support us to be able to keep making independent content on the channel, please do make sure you check out the link to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons, I would not have been able to continue to make content like this and buy these systems without your support. Okay, so to start, and the best place to do that before we get into the system itself is with the branding because there's some stuff here we need to clear up. Originally we had a set of goggles from Fat Shark called the Dominators which I have here. These were compatible with a VTX called the Avatar VTX from Walksnail. We then also had a set of goggles released by Walksnail called the Avatar which are basically identical to the Fat Shark goggles, just a different colour. Today we have the Avatar goggle and the Fat Shark Dominator goggle which are both the same and fully compatible with the Avatar VTXs that are available on the market. The Avatar VTXs were originally sold under the Walksnail brand but Walksnail were basically a subsidiary of Cadix FPV. Basically now Walksnail is going to be dropped and what you now have is the Avatar HD system sold by Cadex FPV which are compatible with the Fat Shark Dominator goggles which are also available. Whilst this has all been a bit confusing, it has all settled down and we now simply have the same goggles from two different manufacturers with VTXs from one manufacturer. Now at the moment there are some discounts and offers available from each of those companies. For instance, you are seeing discounts available from Rotoria on the Fat Shark Dominator goggle. They are offering free postage into the UK and EU as well as a 30 day money back guarantee allowing you to try the system and if you don't like it send it back. There are though some caveats on that 30 day trial and you do need to read the information carefully. For instance, it is only on up to the goggles and the VTX. If you were to buy it in a bind and fly drone or with other products, you would not be able to return them. So before you actually do those purchases via Rotoriot, do make sure you fully understand the terms and conditions. On Caddick side they are doing some offers and deals available as well. For instance they have said to people who have spent money in the past there are discounts available on the Avatar system as well. I'm not going to go into the full details of that but they do have it listed on their Facebook page. So what you have at the moment is discounts from both sides trying to get people into the system. Now since this product actually released I have been quite critical of it and my stance on this product was that my opinion was that it was a beta product and it wasn't quite ready for the prime time. There has been a whole host of updates since then and there is a new beta firmware in testing right now which in my opinion pushes the system on quite a lot and what I want to do is walk you through the issues, walk you through what has been fixed, what hasn't been fixed and then share my overall thoughts on it. Now we'll start with the goggles because that's the best place to begin on this system. Today you have the goggles available from Fat Shark or Walk Snail, but there is also a goggles module coming in the future with HDMI output and that's going to be available for people who don't want to buy these goggles and they want to use it with products such as their SkyZone O4Xs or even the new upcoming HD Zero goggle that's going to be available soon as well. 
Goggles wise, the product really hasn't changed. The hardware is the same. The goggles overall image quality is very good. The displays are good. The fitment and finish on the goggles are good. The only real complaint I still have with the goggles today is that the anti-fogging performance is quite poor and that isn't something they're going to be able to fix in firmware. There has been a whole host of other issues with the goggles with regards to the firmware side of things and we'll cover that when I cover the system side of it but from a hardware point of view my only real complaint today is that the fact that the goggles do fog up easily and that that SD card slot is in a pretty horrible place. Overall though my opinion is they are one of the better fitment goggles that I have tried for me. The image quality and the optics are very good and I have no major complaints with the goggle itself. I do intend to be releasing an STL file in the near future which is going to help improve the fogging performance. If you're someone who's going to need to do that you might be interested. It is going to be a new ear duct for the inside which will help with the directional airflow and hopefully improve the anti-fog. However that isn't something we're likely to see from Caddick Stroke Walk Snail. Now that then leaves the VTX. The situation with the VTX hardware has been that things really haven't changed dramatically other than the fact that we now have the standard VTX like I've got here and there is a new 1S VTX available as well. I don't have that at the moment but I should have my hands on it in the next couple of weeks. Really, most of the problems on this system have been software side and not hardware side. Although it is fair to say that we did see in early days some failures of goggles and VTXs as a result of using them with 6S. For instance, it is not recommended the goggles are used on 6S period. You should only use these on up to 5S and actually my recommendation would be 4S max. On the VTX, it does support 6S, however, we have seen some random failures and again, my personal opinion is that you should always be using these VTXs on a back and I always strongly advise anyone using any digital FPV system always uses a spike absorber, something just to make sure that they are offering additional protection to the input. If you don't know what a spike absorber is, it is basically a small board with some TVS diodes on board, which allow it to absorb any spikes from the system. But the simplest thing you can do with the VTXs is, is run it on your back, on your flight controller. We did see in the early days quite a lot of failures but now things have settled down and we haven't really seen any major problems on goggle side or the odd failure on VTX. Really it's settled down to what I would class in the same level as every other manufacturer. So now we've got past the hardware side of things, it's now time to talk about the software because this is frankly where the system was really struggling. As you've seen from some of my past videos, the compression behavior, the issues on the system were really at a state that I felt the product was classed as a beta product in my opinion and wasn't quite ready for the prime time. However, since then a lot has changed and today with the beta firmware that I have actually tested I don't think the product is actually in beta status anymore and I'm more than comfortable now to start recommending this as an alternative to say HD0 or DJI. More than anything DJI simply because it is a comparable system with regards to the fact that it is a variable latency system. Now if we talk about some of the issues that have been fixed on this system today, the compression behavior has been improved dramatically. You are no longer seeing that large blankets and random areas of compression that we were seeing in the early days and I talked about in my videos. That was fixed by changing the dynamic range and the behavior of the camera on the system and in the earlier firmwares with that it was a very very dark image but in the later test version that I've been using now it is actually much better. I'm not going to say it's perfect but it is certainly at a level that I think is okay. 
In the early days, there was problem with the high power level. So for instance, 1000 milliwatts and 1200 milliwatts didn't work very well at all. And that has been improved. Although I will say performance is better in 700 to 1000 milliwatt territory. And the 1200 milliwatt territory really is pushing the VTX and the goggles to the max. And if you want the best overall image performance, you want to stay off that 1200. The overall RF behavior on the system has also been dramatically improved as well with the way it actually now progressively drops the image quality and increases the latency. It is less cliff edge than it was in the past and overall it is much more comparable to DJI although it doesn't behave exactly the same. It is more linear though and it certainly doesn't have the issues that I saw in the past where you saw these massive spikes of latency out of the blue. It is more progressive and smoother overall. It will always behave like a variable latency system, but they have definitely improved that performance dramatically. One of the other big issues in the early days added the power button to these goggles and it's just so nice and tactile and clicky. I think I just bricked my goggles was bricking of the hardware in firmware updates. We saw users goggles getting bricked as well as VTXs getting bricked as well. However, now they have introduced anti-brick onto both parts of the system and reports of people actually bricking their hardware have pretty much become zero and it's something we no longer have to worry about. Now there are a ton of other little features and improvements that they've made to the system including improving the OSD behavior, adding 4x3 mode and just improving the overall behavior of the system with regards to the RF performance. For instance, the goggles on the Avatar HD system always transmit. In the early days, they would always transmit on whatever power level you left them on last. However, they did take feedback on this and they've now introduced a low power mode on the goggles. And whilst the goggles do always transmit, they now enter a low power 25 milliwatt mode and only go to full power when you arm the quad, which means if you're using the goggles around other pilots, whilst there's still the potential to cause problems, even with the VTX turned off, it should be much less of a problem than it was in the past, where the goggles could have potentially been outputting as much as 1.2 watts. It would be nice to actually see that number come down to say 0.1 watt when the VTX isn't armed and have like a pit mode option for it. But it is good to see that they have taken on board that feedback and tweaked the radio system to perform better. 25 milliwatts could still cause problems, but it's going to be much less problems than 1200 milliwatts. Whilst they have fixed a lot on the system, there are though still some issues. For instance, focus mode is basically still unusable. The OSD is still fixed in a 4x3 style mode and the dynamic range on the camera still isn't quite as it was on the earlier firmware versions. However, none of this is what I would class as a deal breaker with regards to problems today. And whilst this footage does look dark, you can improve it simply by increasing the EV value. I found 0.3 makes a massive difference for me and it is almost perfect at this point on the new beta firmware. Here you will also see some of the signal degradation behavior as I move away. Currently I am pointing away from the aircraft and you can see it continues to block and progressively drop much more linearly than it did in the past. Alongside those issues, there are still some little quirks that haven't been resolved as well, including the fact that there's no individual settings for each VTX. If you're someone with multiple quads, at the moment, the settings for the VTX and camera are global. So if you were to install a VTX in one quad with the camera the wrong way up and the one quad with the camera the right way up, you'd end up having to change it each time you connect to that aircraft rather than those settings be stored on the VTX itself. Hopefully that's something they can improve in the future because it would be good to have it so it just connects and goes back to the settings for that VTX and camera that you used last. So whilst things aren't perfect, the system has come on a huge amount 
over the last few months. There are still a number of things that should be improved. The RF performance isn't quite as good as DJI yet, but it is much, much better than it was. And as I've mentioned, there are those issues that do still need to be addressed as well. However, there is nothing here I now feel is groundbreaking, fundamental, or would stop me recommending this system to people out there. Today, I no longer feel this is a beta product. And as long as you understand that there are some things that aren't quite 100% on it yet, such as focus mode, there is no reason not to consider the Avatar HD system today. It really does start to bring some benefits than we've not seen on other systems. For instance, there is no limit like we see on DJI with regards to range. We have that new One S VTX. You're going to have that new goggles module around the corner as well. And Cadex Stroke Walksnail are really keen on working with people to try and get as much feedback as they can and improve this system moving forward. As critical as I have been on this system, they have reached out to me on several occasions, asked for feedback, taken that feedback on board and then addressed it. The fact that we now have a low power mode is a direct result of the feedback I gave them after doing my RF video on this system. So they are clearly listening to the user base and it is good to see a manufacturer that is doing that. Whilst I know we are likely to see a new system from DJI in the near future, DJI is still DJI. And whilst they do listen to feedback, they don't always act upon it or at least act upon it in a way we would like or at the pace that we would like as well. I'm not for one minute saying Cadex or Walk Snail or even Fat Shark are perfect, but what they are at the moment is taking feedback, listening and improving the system all of the time. And it's going to be really interesting to see where this system continues to go over the next 12 months, because what is clear is that they really want to make this system work. So for me, here and now, it is out of beta status. If you're interested in it, there is, as I say, some offers on at the moment that you may find interesting. There is one last thing I want to mention that I haven't addressed in this video, and that is the situation with regards to CE and FCC status on this system. Today, there is documentation available for the goggles, but we haven't had the documentation for the VTX yet. I haven't seen any real evidence of the CE documentation fully. However, I have been assured that the system is fully compliant. Whilst I still want to see this full information published, it isn't something I feel I should use to hold the system back from being classed as a ready to go system. Just be aware that not all of the documentation at the point of me making this video has been published and you should take that into account depending on where you are in the world and what your local requirements are. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be continuing to make a lot more videos on this system. There is the One S VTX that I want to talk about in the near future as well. And there's going to be more content moving forward as we head into the DJI system release and the VRX module for this and then the new HD Zero goggles. Now, if you want to continue to see content from me like this, please do make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making the content, as I said at the start, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons who have supported the channel up till now. I would not have been able to buy this avatar system or even consider the new DJI system without your support. And if you feel you'd like to support us to continue to make content, please do consider checking it out. Something else my Patreon support is my ability to update Repair.Wiki. If you don't know what Repair.Wiki is, it's a website supported by Lewis Rossman where there is lots of free information on how to repair electronic products. Over the last few months, I've been trying to upload as much information as I can on the products that I tear down on this channel. And there is various pieces of information on the repair of this system, as well as other systems such as HD0 and the DJI Digital FPV system. And I can only continue to do that through the support of my Patreons. And I want to say a massive thank Thank you again to them from me. Anyway, that's it from me. Please do stay safe. Please do let me know what you think in the comment section. As I've said, beta status is gone. If you're interested, I would consider checking out the deal from Rotoriot, 30 day money back guarantee. Although 
do make sure that you do read the terms and conditions. I'm not saying that deal is still going to be on forever. It's only there at the point of me making this video, but it is there if you do want to try the system out. And as long as you do make sure you understand the conditions, you may be able to actually get a trial of the system, find out if you like it or not.